On Wednesday, President Trump is scheduled to sign his second trade agreement this year. The U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement, also known as the USMCA, is expected to be a boon for certain sectors, including the rails. Joining us now to discuss how the deal would directly impact his business, Patrick Ottensmeyer, president and CEO of uh, Kansas City Southern. It's great to have you on uh, uh, this morning, sir. And um, let's start with USMC. I, 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 you're obviously dom a domestic uh, rail, and the transports will be affected most likely by, by the scare of the, the coronavirus, but I can't imagine the rails, uh, that, that it's not high up on your priority list at this point. Is it, sir? Uh, you're talking about the coronavirus? Yes. Uh, no, I mean, it's an unknown. Um, I, it's, it's hard to know how this is going to spread, but uh, I wouldn't say, you know, at this point, uh, based on what we know, that it's going to have a big impact on our, on our business. Right. Uh, the, uh, as I said, the transportation average in terms of airlines, obviously, um, you could see some weakness there, but um, obviously not domestically unless, I think, what are there, three or four or five cases maybe at this point. In, uh, so let's, let's focus primarily on, on the USMCA. Is that going to really be a, a big positive, would you say? I think it will. Uh, you know, the, the biggest positive uh, that I see with USMCA is going to be the removal of the cloud of uncertainty, just the doubt of where things stand between the U.S. and Mexico regarding trade and, and the broader relationship. Uh, beyond that, there are a lot of things that uh, have been modernized and improved from the old NAFTA. I don't think there's any question you know, is this, is this the perfect agreement? Uh, probably not. But is it better than NAFTA? And is it better than no agreement? Certainly, yes. Could see, uh, we're seeing some impact on, uh, on fuel, uh, actually, at this point, from uh, uh, global concerns about what could happen. That, would that be a positive for, uh, for the rail industry? It could be. Uh, in, in our case, uh, uh, in, in the case of moving petroleum products and, and refined products, that's been a big area of growth for us between the U.S. and Mexico. That has uh, more to do with uh, constitutional reforms that took place in Mexico a few years ago that opened the market and started to break down the Pemex monopoly. But that's been a big area of growth for us uh, as a company and, and, and a, a growth area that we see going forward. Are, are you convinced that it is a growth area going forward? This is Michelle Caruso Cabrera. Good to see you again. Because the current Hi, Michelle, president yes. of Mexico is not a big fan of what they did with the oil industry there. He's very much the old school that thinks um, that the government should be much more involved in the oil sector rather than less involved. I think he's changed his position a bit over time, uh, particularly with respect to the refined products uh, importation, because they just they, they don't just don't have the capacity. He's very focused on making sure they have a strong national energy enterprise with Pemex, but, uh, and Pemex doesn't fade away entirely. But I think uh, if you look at what he has said more recently, uh, it seems that he has uh, uh, accepted the fact that uh, uh, what's happening with refined products and, and the, uh, the ability for foreign companies to enter Mexico and compete has been a positive. And uh, in the absence of that, they, they will have a, a real problem with uh, fuel supply. Yeah, that would be a relief if he uh, changed that position. You were working a lot on advancements at the border in terms of technology to speed things up, um, moving stuff from Mexico to the United States. How is that going? It's going well. We're engaged with uh, <laughs> Customs and Border Patrol and all the, the security and tax uh, agencies. We're working on a uh, blockchain project uh, that we think would be helpful in speeding, uh, making the border crossing more efficient. But there's, uh, there's no doubt that there's a lot of improvement. And even if you look at the a model uh, that's right here in North America, the way freight moves between Canada and the U.S., if we could move toward that model, which I think is a very relevant precedent, uh, it could significantly increase capacity for both southbound and northbound What, uh, what would be the difference in time frame? Can you give us, you know, now it's currently and eventually it could be, or in Canada it's only, and in Mexico it's as long as? You know, it, it could probably be a, easily a 50 percent reduction in the amount of time it takes to move a uh, product across the border. Wow. That would be a big improvement. Overall, uh, sir, the, the strength of the U.S. economy is, is, uh, is clear to you at this point, and do you expect capital uh, spending to pick up? 
Well, capital spending in, in our company and across the rail industry has actually been declining, but that's been more a function of the operational uh, efficiency improvements that uh, have taken place across the industry. And, and, uh, and clearly volumes have been weak, so uh, CapEx has, has come down accordingly. Uh, but I, I think uh, you know, the capital investment will continue to provide uh, additional capacity. And uh, we uh, are certainly, I think, a little more bullish than some of our rail industry uh, peers in terms of the way we look at 2020. We think 2020 is, uh, is going to be a, a, a decent year, particularly as we move into the second half of the year. USMCA should be a, a boost to the Mexican economy, uh, which will help us as well.